All right, Perrin and Lucas up here with a sow. Okay. Let's take Lucas here in his leg lift. Sow here in his leg lift. Okay, so same thing. You're trying to you're trying to shift, but the problem is it's that that dipping movement, which is not that effective because it just kind of collapse collapses your foundation. You you I'd like to look at the hips kind of like a a sled, you know. You're literally you, you're like riding that sled, keeping the chin behind the hip, and just start taking it down because you'll start building more speed that way than just going, you know, basically crouching and pushing yourself out, okay? Let's take you into your load. Okay, you, so you're like, you and Luke look identical here, the way y'all are moving. Your hip mobility issues were not as bad as Luke, obviously, because you were getting down, but you did have sun. You were rounding your back when you got low, which was because you weren't, your hips were not as mobile as they could be. And I saw, I see a little bit restrictions, and you've had, and you had those, you had that a lot. That's why I was, we were struggling to get you in your throws and your med throws to, to load down. You wanted to throw so early because it's hard for you to get down and get in these full strides. So you, you do look really kind of restricted here, maybe your external rotators. So if you guys could as well get into the mobility stuff, that would be, uh, it's, while you're doing all this, would, would just help. If you could. In that book, right? Yeah, all that supple leopard stuff um, would be ideal. I'll show you the book again. I got it in the locker room if you want to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's take, uh, we'll take a sow down there. You know what, and you're going to see a similar move with the sow than you guys, except, I mean, once you get into the stride, you're going to look similar in the stride, but we're going to see the torsion difference. Okay. So, both, you guys are really closed, good lateral position here. Just look at the knee. He's got stability there. That knee's obviously turned out. You've, you're losing stability here with that knee obviously turned in, okay? It's just at that point, that is a collapsed leg, and you, you're just going to really, really struggle with peaking force in the front foot. So it's sometimes, too, when you, in, when you push out too early, that wants to break down too early. That's why it's kind of better just to ride those hips out ride those hips out and try to hold that leg in torsion. And that's why that initial move where the lift leg kind of pulls back, kind of coils the hips off, that rotates the knee out. So a little closed hip rotation as you move forward coils the knee out and you just got to hold that position as you go down. If you do it the other way around, you lift and then you push out to, to kick your butt out, you did the total opposite and you just collapse the leg. Okay? You need to kind of go a little bit of an opposite move so we don't we don't do that. Okay, so let's take you in the front foot. So you open front foot and, and then you're kind of now you look like Cass. So look look at that. And always think about it. just imagine what your 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 ankle is going through. Your foot is straight this way, and your knee is straight down that way. Okay. And that's the point where you gotta burst. So I say I always tell guys. How high are you going to jump, you know, like this? How high are you going to jump like that, right? We've got to keep that stability. It's the foundation. It's so critical to you peaking forces, being able to hold a good, stable position. <laughs> Matt tries it. Well, right. I mean. So notice here, he, here's the guy, too, who just stays closed while he starts triple extension, but the feet are still sinking because as he opens the foot, the drive of the ankle kicks right behind as he hits full extension. So we see him peaking forces into a long stride. Look at that chin still behind belt buckle as he hits front foot. Right as, right as that front leg stabilizes, those hips are completely open. A lot of mobility he has. 
And you're going to see here's a guy with in a hyper mobility, as we can even see on the front leg as he gets hyperextended. And here you are with some restricted mobility. So you're, you're going to see a difference right there at front foot. So you go toe to heel because you're not driving. You're in a short stride. Now your leg's starting to extend through a little bit there. And your hips come through. And let's see, your knee's still stabilizing. It's not playing on the screen. That's weird. Um, did the thing freeze or something over there? Let me just finish the analysis, and then we'll uh, I'll go back over it. So you, at least you can have this saved on the TV. All right, so I'll no, just stand up. Okay. All right, so you can see here when your hips did come around, we just same thing. The same thing we were seeing out there. The shoulders are coming with it. So what do we have to do? What do we have to do to get this to go before that? Look, it's the leg drive. The leg is driving just too late. We should have done all this before we landed, just like a sow is doing over here. We should have... That leg should have been driven. Look, his leg is driven and kicked out just as he's landing. And then as that stabilizes, that inertia takes the hips through. So you're hitting front foot here, and this isn't driven yet. See the back leg? It's yeah. not driven yet? So then you're hitting front foot, and now the drive is coming. It's too late. The high-velocity guy does it right before you land. The low-velocity guy lands and then tries to do it. So it's too late. The hips then go too slow. The two go too late after front foot strike. So then the shoulders come with it. Therefore, we don't get the loads on the arm early with it, which is indicated in the hip to shoulder separation optimal external rotation so if we can't do it before front foot if we can't peak the force before front foot we're, we're screwed so it's being able to not lose stability in the leg trying to keep the torsion in the legs not letting the leg collapse too early um, and and also with you would be keeping your momentum going without trying to drive this down and break that just kind of fall into it fall into it to not trying to if you might be just trying to push through here to get your hips out and that causes the break. Just kind of fall into it so we don't lose the stability in that leg before it's, we can drive it. Okay. So, you know, when you have the shoulder speed, you get that kind of optimal external rotation. So you can see he's more forward than you. Okay. And he's going to get in the front leg extension and you're not. So he's converting even more up the kinetic chain. You might not have the mobility. Your hamstrings might not let you do that. So, just stop it there.